direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access. It's Foxborough Central, and here's your host, Bob Hickey. Welcome to another great episode of Foxborough Central. My name is Bob Hickey, and you are my guest as we, as always, take a look at the people, events, and organizations that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. And today, I am honored to be joined by Deanna Willis. Deanna Willis is the Executive Director, Good correct? morning, Bob. Yes, I am. Executive I... Director of the Doolittle Home here yes. in Foxwood. Doolittle Home is a nursing home located on Baker Street, Do... at Baker and Bird. Doolittle Home is a retirement home ah. located on Baker and Bird. Uh, it is a building that has been there for forever, it seems. It was built in uh, 1855. Okay. Uh, the Doolittle family uh, built this home. And it was really three, as you see it today, it's much different than it was then. At that point in time, it was a home and a barn. They built a shed between the two properties. And um, when Sarah gave us, Sarah Doolittle was the daughter, when she gave us the property in 1915, what happened was the shed had been used for tenants. She had people that lived there because she was there all by herself. The the property was huge for her. Mm -hmm. And what she did is she brought in tenants and some of the women that actually were tenants in this place worked at the Foxborough hat shop. They were teachers that came in in the summertime and they did the weaving of the hats. Oh. So she had that group there and she had some men that were there that worked in the town. And um, when Sarah gave us the property, she had already moved to Mansfield, so the property was empty of a Doolittle presence. And uh, she decided to give it to the Universalist Church for a home for elders that would have adequate care, is the way it was written, adequate care for elders okay. of the Doolittle faith. I mean, of the Universalist faith. Right, right. So when she uh, moved on and said, okay, this is what it is. The church took it over and they started, they rehabbed the whole place. They made it uh, livable for that particular population. And um, it went on its merry way. And many of the residents that actually lived there were performing a lot of the services. These were the people that were cooking. These were the people that had gardens and the men actually did some of the carpentry work. Obviously, over time, the building has changed rather dramatically, and so has the concept of the Doolittle Home. Right. As a retirement home today, we're under the Department of Public Health, and we have a very small nursing unit within the, fa the facility, so the residents, as they can age in place, they can go from the retirement part of the home and directly into the nursing unit if they need that kind of care, mm -hmm. and they don't have to leave the property at all. And because we're so tiny, we are so unique, we can have services that most other facilities can't. I mean, this home is such a elegant little facility, and we do things like the hairdresser comes in on a weekly basis, and it's all part of our service. We're actually still ironing everyone's clothes for them. Really? Yeah, because there are ladies and gentlemen <laughs> that live there, and we want them to feel like ladies and gentlemen. So. Our staff does all of this. I, mean, I keep looking at it, it's like a um, long-term care facility on mm -hmm. steroids. You know, <laughs> we have a bed and breakfast atmosphere, again, an elegant, elegant old building. And um, we maintain it as that type of venue where it looks much, much more like a bed and breakfast than any kind of long-term care facility that you might see. So we have that happening and the residents are there and most of them have been there for an extended period of time. Some of our residents have been there up to 18 years. 18 years a, in the same home. We get to know them very, very well. We know their families, we know their kids, we know the grandchildren, we know the dogs, we know everything. So it's just a very home-like atmosphere. And because we're so small, again, we know our residents very well, which makes their lives better and makes our lives better. Mm -hmm. our, I'm sorry. Well, no. I, <laughs> It, and it is a lovely place, and I, I've heard so much about it. And, and just a full disclosure, my wife is on your board of trustees, I believe. She certainly is. And uh, my daughter's also worked for you. She certainly does. <laughs> and she loves working there, and she comes back and tells us, oh, so-and-so, she was getting on me today, or it was all good, and we painted nails. And so it, it is a very 
uh, you know, family-like atmosphere. Very much so. As a matter of fact, our board of trustees is an all-volunteer board. These people come and give up their time and talent to this facility. Many of them are here from Foxborough. Many of them are from out of town. It is a great mix. We have all kinds of backgrounds and educations on that board, so they can give so much to us. They are hard at work on an ongoing basis. It's not an easy job. As a 501c3, um, we're a not-for-profit facility, a lot of our funding must come in from outside endeavors, mm -hmm. and that's why their help is so important to us. Our residents know our trustees. Our residents love our trustees. Whenever we have a trustee meeting, we actually have a formal tea party prior to the meeting. Okay. And our board members are the one that serve the residents, which is in one more way how they serve the population of the Doolittle gotcha. home. But it, it is a good group. Our staff, most of our staff has been there for over 10 years. We have one nurse that's been with us for 30 years. Our dietary food service supervisor has been with us for over 20 years. Mm. I came with the building. So <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, yes, I know the building and know it well. I was the uh, consultant for the Doolittle Home for many years prior to me actually coming in as a full-time director for the facility. So what we do is that we all work very diligently to keep the reputation mm -hmm. of the Doolittle Home as high as it is. I'm surprised that not everybody in the town knows about us. Well, you know, it's interesting because, uh, and I live on Baker Street. and You're a neighbor. I, I am a neighbor. and I. You know, it's funny, when I would walk up to get my newspaper, sometimes somebody just stick their hand out, hi, how you doing, Bob? I'm doing great. <laughs> and, and so it is a very neighbor-like appeal. And you are in the neighborhood, not all nursing homes are. The, the um, move towards a retirement home, but the move towards uh, the facility being um, a more of a medical uh, environment is to have it set on a campus. And so this is rather unique. Not only is it part of the neighborhood, but just the entire uh, retirement to nursing capacity, but coming in primarily as a retirement opportunity it is a uh, very uniquely wonderful opportunity, but also here in the community, uh, for those of you who may be new to town, uh, a lot of volunteerism goes on at the Doolittle Homes. Uh, I remember myself as a, as a JC, we would come in every year during the holidays and sing Christmas carols. And you mentioned at the beginning of the program about how lovely the interior is, and I will attest to that. It is, it is unlike any uh, retirement or nursing facility I've ever seen. It, it's very elegantly appointed, and it's, uh, it's beautiful inside. It is. It's a lovely, lovely structure, and uh, the staff is, is very adamant about keeping it looking that way. Uh, we take a great deal of pride in this home and what we do in this home, but as you were saying, the volunteers who come to the home, I think we've had every Boy Scout, Girl Scout, Cub Scout, and Brownies um, until the Patriots got to be the Patriots. Uh, every year, the cheerleaders would come and sing Christmas carols for us. A little unique. I mean, they're a dance team, not a, you know, <laughs> not a choral group, but um, the residents love to see them coming through. They did a great job. And, and today, uh, some of the high schoolers come through. We have high schoolers working for us, but they come through and they have band groups mm -hmm. and, and everything. And the residents love to see it. Mm -hmm. They really enjoy the small children, the pets, um, the, the adults coming in to visit other adults. We have groups that want to come in to do research projects, like um, the, the services of the people that were there when they were in World War II, when they were in, you know, um, what they did for their lives, mm -hmm. their backgrounds, this type of thing. And they come in to interact with our residents. Uh, as a matter of fact, we even have a program where people can Skype us. So family members love this. They oh, really? can Skype us from all across the country. Uh, our, again, our marketing program put this together for us. And and this was a gift. The computers were a gift from one of the organizations during one of our fund drives. So they came in and they actually brought the computers into us. It is a home where we want everybody to stay connected. That's our big thing. Isn't that we something? want families to stay connected. We want the town to stay connected. Well, as part of that, uh, you are always available. And again, I'm speaking with Deanna Willis, who's the executive director of the Doodle Home. And you, the telephone number out there where they can get a hold of anybody, including yourself or your, uh, uh, I'm going to mess this up. Oh, your new publicity person, Virginia Lair. Virginia Lair, our marketing director, yes, Virginia, is 
2694. That number will get any of us. And uh, people we people who want to volunteer. People who want to volunteer, people want to call to ask questions about the home. You know, it's funny because again, it's a small facility. So we are the masters of nothing, but we do a lot of work of everything. Well, it, it, you know, it's like life. There's so much going on and there's all the different pieces that go into it. So one of the things that I have is kind of a rule in the facility that the phone can only ring three times and somebody has to answer it. So consequently, it doesn't matter if it's someone from uh, the executive office, if it's someone from dietary or the laundry, somebody will try attempt to pick that phone up and direct your phone call. So you can always find one of us here. Excellent. Our our activities director is Rosalind Champagne. She is the person that puts our programs together. She is the one that wants me to remind everyone out there that yes, Christmas time is lovely and we do so enjoy the carols and people, the whole town coming in on the, off the common to sing <laughs> Christmas carols for us, which is unusual. Uh, but <laughs> she wants to remind people that in January, February, March, April, and May, we also love to have people come through mm -hmm. the home. Uh, the Christmas season is glorious in the home, truly glorious in the home. But the rest of the year we want people to come in too. And there's always a need for volunteers. Always a need for volunteers. People that can come in and bring something to the home. And sometimes some of their programs have just been incredible. We have a card making class that is done through our volunteers. We have a group that does some bingos and that's a, again a volunteer activity. Uh, some of the kids come in and they make cards for the residents. And that is a wonderful program. So anything, anytime somebody can think of something special please 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 give us a call we'd love to have you come in I know Roz would love to see you <laughs> and there's also for folks who are internet inclined they can also look you up at doolittle-home.org right and we do have a program where we're Skyping, as I said, with families, and we like to see more of that. Even if it's if somebody's saying, oh, here's the party that we're attending, Skype us, let us see what's going on in your lives too. We really get a kick out of that. And as long as we know that um, when this is going to be happening, we gather people together just okay. to see what's going on. Very so, yes. interesting. Yes. Now, time is flying, and we have so much to cover because we also have a short video that we're gonna watch at the end of our interview section. Okay. So, what I would ask now is we're a 501c3 organization. Yes. Which means that there is a component of fundraising that goes on throughout the year. Yes. But you also subsidize some of the... We, right now, uh, we're subsidizing about one third of the residents that actually live in the home. Our job is to keep people in our home for as long as we possibly, possibly can. And the residents that we're subsidizing uh, this is, sometimes it's more than 30%, uh, sometimes it's less. Mm -hmm. That's why we have our, um, our endowment in order to maintain the people within our home. Mm -hmm. And our endowment, we need to do fundraising to make sure that the endowment stays healthy. And it's the goal of everybody that works at the Doolittle Home to make sure that this happens. It's the goal of our marketing person, our fundraising person, Virginia. This is her new goal that we've okay. given to her, so she's always busy. Well, with a new goal, I'm sure there'll be some new ideas coming down. I know in the past we've done the, the Doolittle yes. Home auction here at Cable Access. We've been supportive of that, so I'm looking Very much forward so. to seeing what the new fundraisers are. Our next projects are coming up. Um, we're hoping we're to have an art auction mm. um, and we're, we're talking about maybe doing a road race which could be something in the center of town. Uh, we're talking maybe even a bed race, you know, to have everybody do a bed race and we'll do <laughs> I have, no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but well, it sounds fun. It sounds like fun. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about something where maybe we could use our nursing home beds and put someone in and, and have them race around the common <laughs> and see how we could do that. It should be a good time. You know, it should be re reflective of what we do. Well, I, I can't speak to how much money you'll raise with that, but I can guarantee you'll get some volunteers from Cable Access to videotape it. So. <laughs> that would be a good time. <laughs> Very I'm, I'm, of course, speaking with Deanna Willis, who's the Executive Director of Doolittle Home. Uh, as we get into fundraising and the appeal there, folks who live at the Doolittle, it's a retirement facility. Yes. So as you're planning your next chapter in life, shall we say, they would interview, they would come look, and it, it's not a facility where you choose people, it's a facility where people come to you and it's a, an agreement, it's a meeting, it's a... An opportunity. How do people come to live there? 
Well, uh, it's, a lot of it is word, word of mouth. As a matter of fact, in some instances, we even have second generation coming to live there. Their parents were there. Now they're coming. Um, and it is very unique in that. Again, very small town. A lot of people come from the immediate area. We have two programs. We have a life care program, which literally means, as I said, we take care of somebody for their life. And some people come in on a month-to-month -month basis. They mm. just choose to do this. They, they rent the place for a month, and the nursing unit is open to them for another fee. And they decide, OK, I would choose to stay here. Or some people decide that they're going to move on to a different type of facility. But most of the people that live there, especially on the life care, they're there for their life, mm -hmm. literally. And uh, they, see, they come to us from, uh, again, word of mouth through people in, we have some people from the North Shore a lot of them coming in from that area, from the Foxborough area, from the immediate area, uh, from Mansfield and Walpole, Foxborough, Rentham, Franklin, that type of thing. And again, when people know us, right now we had two sisters that lived in the home. We had many of our staff, their family members are there. We know how good we are. So our <laughs> if people <laughs> bring their own family. Right, we bring know, their own family, right. right. So our OT, a, a PT person, uh, one of our director of nursing services, her family member was there. Um, I, one of the pharmacists, consultant pharmacists, there. Uh, not only was his mother there, but also his uncle was there. So yes, we we know what we do, and we know we do it well. So Excellent. we want people to out there to know that we do this well. Well, there's no better recommendation than yourself. Then, <laughs> then that's that's, and I say that in a positive way because obviously, if it's a place that you're happy working in, you're happy with the people you work with, and you're recommending your own family members to come stay there. Absolutely, and that must be a really unique. Wonderful opportunity. It is, and it's a, it is for the people that actually come to the home. When they get to our home, they realize um, that you can come to an atmosphere like this, and it's just another home. It's just a change of an address. It is really in a better lifestyle for mm -hmm. a lot of people. So with this, uh, you know that over the years, uh, you have mentioned some of the early transitions from a uh, boarding in the barn to a uh, more of a, a full outfitted facility. What are some of the changes going on now? Well, again, we have uh, we've received permission from the Department of Public Health to make some changes on our second floor unit. And what we're going to be doing there is we're going to be adding a lot more bathrooms so that people can have bathrooms directly in their rooms instead of going out into the corridor. Ah. Don't forget, when this home was first in its inception, people thought going in from an outhouse to a bathroom within the home was a big deal. Now we're, we're changing the entire environment to make it much more f user friendly for a frail elder population. Mm -hmm. Our average age right now is 93 years old. Wow. Yeah. And it has been um, it has been increasing because people are spending more time at home and they wait a lot longer to come to the Doolittle home. So we have to equip our place for them and to make it easy for these residents to get around and to live their life in our environment. Well, I'm very interested in hearing how the bathrooms will be installed. Maybe we'll do that on a different <laughs> uh, this old home, uh, this old type, home of, right? type of program. Oh yes, because in, in intriguing. Fairness, well, I. To your credit, or to the credit of the organization, uh, the, the facade in the home appears to be a home, and so it certainly doesn't stand out in any way from, from the nature and the flavor of, well, maybe the library across the street, but I, I like to think that's the outlier, <laughs> not the rest of our homes. Uh, but the elevator that was installed and the uh, medical wing that was put on, those were all very nicely fit to where they match and they blend in. And you also have this lovely garden out back. Oh yes, our garden, our garden area was uh, it, it was dubbed God's half acre because <laughs> it truly is just a beautiful, beautiful area out there. In the spring and summertime, we use the area for uh, barbecues and things like that. There yes. is a deck out there, and we've tented I've it. I've seen the tent. Yes, yes and we tented absolutely. the area out there. We have a beautiful gazebo out there. We've held weddings in that area. Um, someone from the town at requested that we um, open the place up for a wedding, and we gave them permission to do that. Uh, it seems that... Um, I hope they made a very nice donation to the 501c3 <laughs> yes. at the end. Yes, and not only that, but uh, we've done wedding pictures. 
Uh, when I first came to the Doolittle Home, I thought it was the oddest thing. I, the first phone call I received was someone calling up and saying, may we use the garden on Saturday? And for what? For wedding pictures? <laughs> really? And then they said, and if it rains, may we use the front parlor? This was a whole new thing to me. Now that I find the residents, they absolutely love this. Do they they really? get to see the bride. Well, the I was going to say, yeah. it's got to be a little <laughs> disconcerting to have, have a wedding party just show up on your doorstep. Right. Hi, we want to come to your living room. Right. Exactly. Take, but it's embraced. It's, oh, no. Oh, it's embraced. Not only is it embraced, but we use it as an activity. The residents later on get to tell us exactly what they liked or didn't like about the dresses. It's 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 un, it's unbelievable. We really take part in this whole well, thing. Well, you know what, folks? If you want to volunteer your wedding, uh, <laughs> call up to do a little home at 508-543-2694, and let's make a day of it in many different ways. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, it, just, it, but again, it goes towards the family atmosphere. Exactly. And, doing for neighbors and, and we're making part of yourself this community. a part of the community. Exactly. I, I mean, we're part of the community in so much as we actually do all of the cookies for the Veterans Day programs. I mean, that's our job. And our staff volunteers their time to go over to make sure that they, you know, could get the cookies all set out and make sure that everybody gets their coffee and cookies. They, we want to be as much a part of this community as the community is a part of us. Well, you know, that's, I'm glad we're doing the programs. I did not realize that was your role in the uh, Veterans Day. Yes, that's what we do. Not only that, but um, in the past, our Board of Trustee members have actually driven several of the veterans to um, some of their medical appointments because our van can carry a wheelchair. Mm. And so if somebody calls us we, and we don't need to use the van for something, we will make arrangements to get them to their appointments if necessary. We are part of this community. So, the Doolittle Home is part of our community, and hopefully now that we've shared a little, our community will become more part of the Doolittle. Hopefully, yes. Please come visit. Uh, I'm going to give you the last word. We are so out of time because we also have this lovely video that we're going to watch at the end of our interview segment. Uh, again, here with Deanna Willis, who is the Executive Director of the Doolittle Home. Doolittle has been contacted at 508-543-2694, located on the corner of Bird and Baker here in lovely Foxborough. It's a lovely facility. Lovely people living there, and you've been lovely to join us today. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, I'm so glad people have the opportunity now to hear about what we do, and will stop by and visit us and, you know, at their leisure. Well, uh, for folks who may not have visited you yet, why don't we take a quick look at this video, and maybe you can learn a little bit more about the Doolittle. <music>
say goodbye. Have a great day, Foxborough. Thank you.